day everyone. My name is Debra Yudialovo and I'm the reporter for the day. Reading from this book, Revised National Plumbing Code of the Philippines, page 93, stated that, when permitted by the department having jurisdiction, clean running water used exclusively as a cooling medium in an appliance, device, or apparatus may discharge into the drainage system through the inlet side of a fixture trap in the event that a suitable fixture is not available to receive such discharge. Such trap connection shall be by means of a pipe connected to the inlet side of an approved fixture trap, the upper end terminating in a funnel shaped receptacle set adjacent, and not less than 152 mm above overflow rim of the fixture, means that you can discharge waste temporarily to the inlet side of a fixture as alternative for not having a suitable fixture. Next, section 809 for the drinking fountain. This section has shortly stated that drinking fountains may be installed with indirect waste, so there are less complications when installing a drinking fountain. Section 810, Steam and Hot Water Drainage Condenser and Pump. Section 810.1, No steam pipe shall be directly connected to any part of a plumbing or drainage nor shall any water having a temperature above 50 degrees Celsius be discharged under pressure directly into any part of the drainage system. All closed condensers or sumps shall be provided with a vent taken off from the top and extended separately full size above the roof. All condensers and sumps shall be properly trapped at the outlet with a deep steel trap extending 
within 152 millimeter of the bottom of the tank. The top of the deep seal trap shall have a 19 millimeter diameter opening located at the highest point of the trap to serve as a siphon breaker. Outlets shall be taken off from the side in a manner to allow a water line to be maintained that permanently occupies not less than one half the capacity of the condenser or sump. All inlets shall enter above the water line where plates or buckles shall be installed within the tank to protect the shell. Here's the table for you to refer showing the sizes of boiler blowout water outlet event, which varies to each other accordingly. You can see, number one, blow off has a measure of 19 mm and which it will also need 19 mm of water outlet and 51 mm of vent. Remember that be sure to use only it with a boiler of 9.29 square meter of heating surface. Section 810.2 Sams, condensers, or intercepting tanks constructed of concrete shall have walls and bottom not less than 110 mm thickness. And inside shall be cement plastered not less than 13 mm in thickness. Condensers constructed of metal shall be not less than number 12 US standard gauge, 2.77 mm thickness. And all such metal condensers shall be protected from external corrosion by an approved bituminous coating. And lastly, for section 810, sums and condensers shall be provided with suitable means of for cleaning and shall contain a volume of not less than twice the volume of water removed from the boiler or boilers connected thereto when the normal water level of such boiler or boiler is reduced not less than 102 mm. And now, let's proceed to section 811 or chemical waste. This section is much important aside from having eight subsections. As we know, chemicals have more hazardous characteristics in which we need to separate and dispose properly. Also, there are some chemicals that react with or destroy other substances and materials, in which we will need to choose an appropriate material and design enough allowances for fixture placement. Section 811.1 Chemical or industrial liquid waste likely to damage or increase maintenance costs and excreta sewage detrimentally affects sewage treatment or contaminate surface or subsurface water shall be treated to render them innocuous prior to their discharge into the drainage system. Fighting conveying industrial chemical or process waste from their point of origin to sewer connected with treatment facilities shall be of such material and designed to adequately perform its intended function to the satisfaction of the administrative authority. Section 811.2 Each waste pipe receiving or intended to receive the discharge of any fixture where acid or corrosive chemical is placed and each vent pipe connected thereto shall be constructed of chemical resistance, glass line pipe, high silicone, iron pipe, lead pipe, not less than 3.2 mm wall thickness, an approved type of ceramic glaze or unglazed petrified clay or other approved corrosion resistant material. Section 811.3 All drain materials shall be of approved type and quality. Section 811.4 Whenever practicable, all piping shall be readily accessible and installed with a maximum of clearance from other surfaces. Section 811.5 The owner shall make and keep a permanent record of the location of all pipings and venting carrying chemical waste. Section 811.6 No chemical vent shall be connected or intersect vent for other services. Section 811.7 No chemical waste shall be discharged into the ground, local sewer or other disposal means without approval of the local administrative authority. Section 811.8 The provisions of this section relative to materials and methods of construction need not to apply to minor installations such as small photographic or x-ray dark rooms or small research or control laboratories where small amounts of adequately water diluted chemical are discharged. 
So, in some buildings that discharge less harmful chemicals, there is no need for minor installation. And that's all for section 811. Let's now proceed to section 812, Vertical Wet Venting. Before we go to its subsection, we need to know first what is wet vent. According to J. Tech Plumbing, wet vent is a waste pipe that also serves as a vent pipe. Wet venting is most common in conjunction with toilet and sink. The drain for the sink is also the vent for the toilet. Let's take a look at this picture as an example of a wet vent. Section 812.1 All wet vented fixtures shall be on the same floor level provided further that fixtures with a continuous vent discharge into a wet vent shall be on the same level as the wet vented fixture. Section 812.2 The vertical piping between any two consecutive inlet levels shall be considered a wet vented section. Each wet vented section shall be a minimum of one pipe size large larger than the required minimum width pipe size of the upper fixture or shall be one pipe size larger than the required minimum pipe size for the sum of the fixture units served by such wet vented section whichever is larger but in no case less than 51 mm in diameter. Section 812.3 Common vent sizing shall be the sum of the fixture units served but in no case smaller than the minimum vent pipe size required for any fixture served are by section 904. Section 813, special venting for INAT Now, in this section, I will show you a video clip which clearly explains the purpose of INAT fixture venting, as this type of fixture is a bit complicated. The island fixture vent has pretty much been replaced by the combination waste and vent system, but it's still a part of our plumbing code. As you can see from the drawing, the island fixture vent is a much more complicated system to install than the combination waste and vent pipe. The purpose of the island fixture vent is to be able to locate a sink in an island. There are several rules that go along with the installation of the island fixture vent. All the piping that's located below the flood level rim of the fixture is required to be installed as drainage piping. The vent for the fixture has to rise vertically to a point above the bottom of the sink before it can offset horizontally and travel vertically downward connecting back to the drain. The vent then extends from the island fixture vent horizontally to a point where it can extend vertically to above the flood level rim of the fixture where it can then offset and connect with other vents in the drainage venting system. The purpose for the rise of the fixture vent to above the bottom of the fixture is so that if there becomes a stoppage downstream of the fixture before the vent connection, the water won't travel through the vent pipe and act as a drain. With it rising above the bottom of the fixture and a stoppage downstream, the water level in the sink or the lavatory will rise to the point that the vent is connected, therefore indicating to the owner that there's a problem with the drainage system. The island fixture vent is required to have cleanouts installed. Cleanouts are required in the vent at this location and are required in the vent at this location. The purpose of the cleanouts is to be able to clean the lines if there's a stoppage. If there's a stoppage downstream and the fixture becomes flooded to this point, the flooded water extends all the way through the vent system. Since there's no fixtures to wash the vent that's running horizontally below the flood level rim, the cleanout is required to make sure that there isn't any stoppage in that line after the drain line has been cleared of its stoppage. Now that we already know about island fixture venting, take a note of these requirements when installing an island fixture vent. 
First, drops for island kings and similar equipment shall be rocked in above the floor and may be planted by extending the vent as high as possible, but not less than the drain board height and then returning it downward and connecting it to the horizontal sink drain immediately downstream from the vertical fixture drain. Second, the return vent shall be connected to the horizontal drain through a wave branch fitting and shall in addition, be provided with a foot vent taken off the vertical fixture vent by means of a wave branch immediately below the floor and the hand extending the vent line to the nearest partition and then through the roof to the open air or may be connected to other vents and at a point not less than 152 mm above the flood level rim of the fixture surge. Third, village fitting shall be used on all parts of the vent below the floor level and such a vent line shall have a minimum slope of 2% or 21 mm block toward the drain where it is connected shall be maintained. Fourth, the island sink drain upstream of the return vent shall serve no other And lastly, accessible clean out shall be installed in the vertical portions of the foot vent and waste at floor level. So that is all my report for today and thank you for